Well, good morning, everybody. This is not Sorel, nor Gio. This is Andrea, and I'm welcome. I'm welcoming everybody uh, to hear the daily huddle. is uh, an opportunity for all to meet, share knowledge, and share an experience of this amazing world of us. So before we start today with Dr. Monica Ogando, which we are super excited about speaking with her, about her life and how relationships were affected by her journey, which is the topic for today, we're going to go around the room and ask a couple of questions to start setting up our morning because you know how much we enjoy saying that the way you start your day is the way your day is going to go. So let's do it. Everyone ready? I'm super pumped this morning, but let's just let's just try to keep the momentum. Um, let's start with you, Dr. Monica. Where, how are you? I am the way that I said I am. And today I am excited, excited to be here. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let's continue with Fareed. Fareed, what time is it? Time is now. Oh. Time is here on the daily huddle. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. It's the only time we have, right? Yes. The only time that matters. Thank you so much. And I'm going to call on the people that are not with cameras on, but if you don't, you cannot join us, it's totally okay. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Chase, where are you? I am right here where I need to be. Great to see you. Look lovely. No, thank you so much. I cannot say if you look look lovely, but you feel lovely. So let's put it that way. <laughs> I changed my phone yesterday, so I didn't Do update not. it yet. Everything's crazy. <laughs> Don't you worry. You feel lovely. <laughs> Rashida, if you can join us for just one second, what are you grateful for? Morning, everyone. Good morning, Daily Herd family. I am grateful to be alive and to be here with my family, Daily Herd. That's fantastic. I love it. Thank you, Rashida, for that. I believe Cece is on here too, but I don't know if she will be able to join us. Maybe, maybe not. Cece, who will you hug today? Maybe she's not available, but that's okay. Yeah. So I'm going to answer. Oh, she is. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm going to hug myself today. Good morning. <laughs> Let's all hug ourselves and start the day with an amazing hug. So this is the way we start the day with those five critical questions, uh, particular here in the Daily Huddle. And today is all about the relationship and how it's connected to what Tara and Catherine Con, um, informants in during the Wednesday uh, discussions, which is all about communications and relationships. That's the theme of our Wednesday's daily huddles. That's what we have today, Dr. Monica Ogando. It's a pleasure. And let me give you guys a very short introduction. Uh, focus on, you know, that all CEOs want predictable revenue, passionate teams, profitable growth. So how do we get this? How do we keep those? And how do we grow? That's where she comes in. She helps leaderships look into their blind spots to help them make better decisions and decode and optimize their relationships for success. That's who she is. She's amazing. She's also one of the leaders of the Daily Huddle. And we're super proud to have her today in our discussion. Good morning, Dr. Monica, how are you Thank doing? Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here with you, Andrea. That's awesome. Thank you for coming. And as you may have noticed, we didn't do a uh, that joke in the morning because I wanted to use this opportunity. Dr. Monica use, use, usually brings kind of a saying in the morning, I'm not asking you for do that, but let's just join all together in a pause yes. for a second. And let's just breathe in, hold it and out. That's what we're gonna do today. We don't have a joke, we don't have a saying, we have breathing. 
<laughs> so Amen. Let, let's do it. So why don't we start the discussion, Monica? Tell us the question of the day so we can reframe our discussion is how has your journey, your particular journey in life affected your relationships today? Mm -hmm. That's a big question. So why don't we start talking a little bit about your, we're very intrigued about your studies, your life work, and mm -hmm. just let's just start for there, from there and then uh, trickle into a, an interview about what we can communicate and learn from that. Okay, well, I'm going to focus on the pivot points, right? Because there's so many. Absolutely. And we'll be here forever. The first pivot point uh, that really affected my relationships and the way that I kind of interact with people and also the divine, because that's really um, where relationships stem from, is your connection to the divine influences and informs how you, how you uh, relate to other people. So the first pivot point was, I was born the first one. And then when my sister and brother were born, then instead of being the first and only child, I became the oldest child, right? And so that affected me because at first I was like, okay, this is really nice. And my parents are amazing. And I'm the center of the universe. <laughs> and then when my sister was born, I was like, you interloper. I didn't know that. Obviously, when you're a child, you don't know those words. <laughs> But the energy, the feeling of I'm no longer important. I'm no longer the only thing that matters to you know the people that I love the most, right? So that that kind of conversation was underneath the surface. And then when my brother was born, I think I remember, oh, the boy matters more than the girls. Because they gave him more attention than they gave my sister even when she was born. Now, I don't know that I could quantify that. I I don't know if I made that up, but energetically, it felt like boys matter more than girls. So that was the, that was the first and second pivot, I suppose, right? The, the one of not being the center and the gendering of importance. And then the third pivot when I was a child was that I grew up, you know, my parents would have like dinners and invite people over and we would be like in front of other adults, et cetera. The conversations that they would have in private were different than the conversations that they would have in public. And I would get in trouble because I'd be like, mommy, you didn't say that. And she'd be like, hey, the muchacha, you know, like, don't stop interrupting and don't, <laughs> don't get in, in grown people's business. And, and that was a pivot for me because I made up a couple of things about it. One is that my parents are hypocrites because they tell you that lying is bad, but then here they are lying, right? Um, and secondly, that uh, adults are just figuring it out too. It's not like they're bad people. It's not like they're evil. They're working it out. And so it gave me kind of like a freedom of not like, oh my God, the people that are that supposed to know the most know the least. I, it wasn't a freak out for me like that. It was more like, oh, I don't have to pay attention to y'all. I could just figure it out too. Just like y'all are figuring it out. And I guess we're going to spend the rest of our lives figuring it out together. And it was very liberating because then I didn't have to concern myself with the approval of my dad or the approval of my mom or whether so-and-so liked me or whatever, because it was like, y'all y'all don't know, but you don't have the answers either, right? And so that was liberating. And then fast forward a lot of years after adolescence, I'm in college, I met my college sweetheart who then became my husband, who then became my ex-husband. <laughs> um, and we have, he's the father of my two children. And when we separated, rather a year or so after that, I was diagnosed with cervical cancer, stage four cervical cancer. And I was given about a year to live. Oh, and I just, I, I was 20 something at the time. I was like, 20 somethings don't get cancer, much less die from it. Like, what is this? And, and why am I dealing with this? And I felt punished. I felt challenged. I felt almost like God was saying, let me see what you do with this one. And I remember a lot of pleading, a lot of bargaining, a lot of praying, a lot of fears, you know, tears at night. And at one point I was looking at a lot of medical bills that I had and my daughter was sleeping. She was three at a time. She was sleeping in, the, in her room and she came out, she heard me and she sits on my lap. She's like, mommy, What's the matter? Why are you crying? 
And I was like, oh, honey, you know, I'm just worried about some things. And you don't have to worry about it, though. Like, it's, it's OK. You can go back to sleep. And she's rubbing my back. And she's kind of like going back and forth like that. She puts her head here. and She starts crying, too. And I was like, baby, why are you crying? I mean, I know why I'm crying. Why are you crying? She said, mommy, if we cry together, it goes by faster. Oh. Oh, I still get emotional when I remember that. Mm -hmm. The child is almost 30 now. And I'm still, you know. Um, and for me, that pivot, that was a significant um, turn because it redefined for me what it means to be compassionate, mm -hmm. what it means to be empathetic, what it means to witness someone, to sit with someone in their sadness and their anger and their fear. Um, and, and what it means to have another human being feel seen, you know, because it was like, she didn't understand what was going on. She didn't agree. Mm -hmm. None of that was necessary for her to witness me. And, and children just do that so, so naturally. Yeah, They just know how to witness themselves and each other. Mm -hmm. And so for me, those were pivots that were, all of those ones that I just mentioned, defined and redefined how I relate to people because the the first one it was you're not the center of the universe Monica you're not yeah you're not the only one here you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the second one was that that there is an unconscious bias in the universe mm -hmm. in the society that we live in in the culture that we live in whether it's race gender age whatever it is it exists. Don't be blind to it. Don't be a slave to it, but don't be blind to it either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The third one about people are just trying to figure it out. Um, you know, whereas with my parents, it could have been a huge disappointment. It was very liberating. It's like, you know, give people some grace. Everybody doesn't have it together. And we could just have grace with one another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, this is where I get the idea of like, you know, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Before you wreck yourself. Yes, like, don't make assumptions. Um, and then the fourth one about just witnessing uh, with my, the, the experience that I had with my daughter when I was going through, mm -hmm. through cancer, this idea of being able to witness, to sit with pain, to sit with despair, um, and to, to be with someone and not necessarily have to have the answers or fix anything. Just yes. Thank you. Um, Thank you for sharing those, like those four pivotal moments in your life, at least that trigger some of your decisions, uh, some of the, the way that you interact with people because it's all about relationships, right? It's that you're not the center of attention. There is some bias in the world. Be aware of it and manage it as, mm -hmm. much, as much as you can. Everyone is trying to figure it out. Jump in that train and do it. And still be still, sit still, empathy, compassion. That's beautiful. So thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. can, can you say that any of those or a combination of those pivot your passion for what you study, what you, yes. are, what you are doing? Tell us a little bit about how potentially yeah. those things connected to your decision yeah. in your studies and tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. The, I, the, the mask, masculine line in my father's line Mm -hmm. I always associated with love and protection and care. I felt very safe with my uncles, with my cousins, with my father. Um, like they got it. Like you don't have to worry about it. You don't even have to think about it. You know, I've, I'm 12 years married and I have, I don't even have to think about the trash being taken out. It's not even a thought in my mind. It just automatically <laughs> happens, right? <laughs> Um, and it was the same thing with my with my father and, and the men in his line. However, the men in my mother's line, my experience of them were sexual predators. Um, and so this conversation of like, people are not the same, mm -hmm. right? Just because we have the same labels doesn't mean that we all fall under the same category. Um, and that allowed me to give people the individuality that they needed. Mm -hmm. It also had me asking why, but not like why me from a, maybe it started as a victim uh, because I don't know if you know the data, Andrea, but um, 20 to 40% of black and brown and indigenous women of color have had some level of sexual abuse, have experienced, have received 
some level of sexual abuse in their lifetime, particularly when they're children. And I'm one of them. Yeah, very, very familiar uh, and with that. So I, I was like, well, why? Why? First, why me? Yes, from a, from a victim, from a, like, what did I do? And sometimes the victim blames themselves, et cetera. But also, like, why is it so prevalent? And how come we relate to one another like this? And why do we sexualize and, and sexualize children and infantilize women? Because they're kind of connected. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and I noticed that a lot of that was common rhetoric in the church. I grew up Catholic. And... Um, and I was like, well, hold on. There's a difference though. Like, just like there's a difference between the men in my father's side and the men in my mother's side. There's also a difference between, and they're all family. There's also a difference between the culture of the church and God. They're not the same. That was an important distinction for me. Because mm-hmm. if I had synonymized the abuse that I had seen and witnessed and received under the church with God, I would have thought God is also an abuser and F all of you, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know? Um, so for me, it was like, you, you need another PR people because these <laughs> people are not representing you well. I don't know. You need to find these people, get somebody else. And that's what started me getting curious about other faiths. That it was like, how do other people understand the divine and understand God? Do they have the same relationship? Do they have the same biases? Do they have the same problems? What are the cultures different? How do they celebrate differently? Um, Mm -hmm. Because there was another conversation in the church that said, like, if you don't convert, if you don't accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, then you're lost. And and I'm like, well, what about people who've never heard of him? Like, you can't blame them for that. And I started just asking curious Curiosity questions, you know, I was like, wait a minute, let's read the small print on this little contract of salvation. What is this? <laughs> um, and so that got me really curious about studying other religions, about studying other traditions and cultures, and seeing how other people relate to and connect with and understand the divine. And for me, that uh, when I went to school for it, because one of my graduate degrees is in psychology, the other one is in comparative religions. And I remember some of my friends telling me when I was sharing that I was going to school for another PhD in comparative religions, aren't you afraid that this is going to kill your faith? Aren't you afraid that this is going to, you know, it's kind of like looking behind mm. the curtain. Oh, okay, that's just magic. Just, those are just tricks. Aren't you afraid it's going to challenge your conversation and your relationship to the divine? And I was like, you know, if my relationship to the divine can be challenged by a degree, I want to see it happen. Like if you're that, if you're that brittle, that if you're that brittle, let's see it happen, right? Um, and it actually did the opposite. It strengthened it. I was like, wow, you are everywhere. No wonder the word for the all is considered the universe. It's one song. You are everywhere. There is nowhere that I am, me talking to the divine, mm-hmm. that you are not. And I can see you in other human beings. I can see you in tragedy. I can see you in triumph. I can see you in limbo. I can see you in doubt. I can see you in in intimacy. It was just, oh, it was just so all-encompassing. I'm getting emotional just thinking about it now. And Mm -hmm. the idea is, for me, Mm -hmm. if I can be the essence of the divine and I can see in another the essence of the divine, how would that relationship go? Would it be disrespectful? Would it be condescending? Would it be distant? Mm-hmm. Would it have an agenda? Would, would I consider myself separate from this person? Would their agenda be somehow in enmity with mine? And the answer mm-hmm. to all those questions is no. No, I would be curious. I would be interested. I would, be, yes. I would allow for our darkness and our shadow because I know that it's just the cover of separation mm-hmm. when underneath that we're all one that's beautiful and 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 I, what i'm hearing from your from your story and how you're connecting it to past to your decisions to your present i hear some themes i hear individuality it's a key component in your in your persona who you are curiosity that's another one that triggers when i'm listening to you and the challenging let's just challenge the status quo and see what happens. What, what if? It's mm-hmm. a lot of 
th those are kind of the three themes that I am interpreting from what you're telling us and sharing with us, which are beautiful. And thank you so much. Because that's from those three, I'm going to my next question. Mm -hmm. That seems to be impacting your work today because you were very clear about how you treat people individual with their own entity and their own persona. Mm -hmm. So take us from those studies, like from the child and everything that you experience as a mother to your selection about the things, all your PhDs and the things that you've studied. And now take us to how you're working today with those learnings and your relationships. Yeah. There's, um, <laughs> so when I say, for example, check yourself before you wreck yourself and audit your assumptions, I'm not saying don't have assumptions. <laughs> we, we always have, we all have, have them, right? <laughs> yes. I'm not saying don't have them. I'm saying be aware of them. I'm saying use them instead of letting your assumptions use you and you be unaware. One of the assumptions that I make in the, in the world is that we live in a friendly universe. This is a quote from um, Albert Einstein. He said, the, the most important decision you have to make in the world is whether you live in a friendly or an unfriendly universe, because from that decision come all others. If you live in an unfriendly universe, you're gonna be checking for who wants to Defensive take from you, who and wants to steal mm -hmm. from you, who's got your back, who's not got your back, and I gotta wait and see if I can trust you. I gotta mm, wait absolutely. and see if you're an okay person because I live in an unfriendly universe and these things are not a given. Mm -hmm. But when you live in a friendly universe, even when somebody breaks your trust, it is to your highest good. Even if somebody uses you, it turns yeah. out in your favor. Um, so I'm not concerned about somebody's um, lack of integrity or, and it doesn't, it doesn't register like that. It doesn't register like lack of integrity. It registers like either they don't know themselves to be God mm -hmm. or there's something for me to learn from this to unhook me from whatever isn't God about me. The person in oh, front that's of me, beautiful. The person in front of me is showing me something about me. Mm -hmm. And so where am I going to run to? Who, who am I going to break up with? If you're, if you're a person that represents a part of me, who am I going to break up with? You're me. <laughs> and whoever the next person is in front of me, that's going to be me too. Who am I breaking up with? Who am I divorcing? And so um, that informs my relationships. The other part that informs my relationships too is to the, I always say to, uh, to my friends and my loved ones and everybody that I don't do pink slips. I don't fire people from being in a relationship with me. We might have grow each other. And that might be like a natural thing, right? But there's never going to be a time when you're like, I'm, I'm going to be like, you embezzled $50,000 for my business? I'm calling the cops. We're going to go to the, I mean, I might beat your butt. <laughs> <laughs> There might be a side. I don't want to be on that side of the story. <laughs> there might be a silent treatment somewhere. And we might need to work this out. We might need to bring in some help. But I'm not quitting you. Mm -hmm. And you're not quitting me. Because this is something for us to get over. This is something for us to get past. This is something for us to learn from. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that can be controversial. Because all of us have a thing where we draw the line. Yeah, I draw the line at physical Boundaries, life. I yeah. draw the line at stealing. I draw the line at infidelity. I draw the line at blah, blah, blah. Draw the line at what? Because all of this is showing you you. And don't you want to know how low you can go so you can decide that you're not going to go that low no more? <laughs> like mm -hmm. this, is, this feedback Beautiful. is for yes. edification. That's fantastic. And that's the way that you're also your relationships, not only with your loved ones or the people, you know, and you're close, but also the clients you help and serve. Yes, I have right. to assume that translates in everything, right. uh, not only your relationships, but how you help people that are actually paying you right. to help them with uh, their, their growth. Well, the, the advantage of having that kind of come from mm -hmm. is that we don't need to get into a pissing contest. A lot of times in, in this culture in particular, we have this thing like we have to keep it together and we have to look like we know what we're doing. But <laughs> I just learned that nobody knows what they're doing. <laughs> Everyone is trying it out. <laughs> in my zero to seven, I learned nobody, nobody knows what they're doing. The people I respected the most had at least clue. So there's nothing you can show me that's going to lessen my respect for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna gain more or less respect because you have it more or less together. You that's can be your whole self with your shadow, with your darkness, with your faults, with your blind spots, with 
the things you hadn't considered with your biases, conscious or otherwise, you can be your whole self and we're going to work it out. And what that does is that it allows people permission to accept themselves, but it also kind of, you can see the shoulders kind of going down a little like, oh, mm, yes. finally a space where I could just be my fullness without fear of judgment or reprisal. And we don't, we don't do that very often with one another or with ourselves. And so I find that to decide to be that person for someone else and to be that person for myself is I think one of the greatest gifts that I can, that I can leave behind for humanity. Nice, fantastic. Thank you so much. And we're getting to a point to open for questions uh, from anyone in the chat. I'm checking on Facebook as well. So if you have any questions specifically for Dr. Monica, please raise your hand. Um, if you want to share something that triggered while she was speaking, uh, any action items you want to put in place, this is all about the huddle. So let's just talk about among ourselves and, and Chase. Please. Dr. Monica. Hey. <laughs> Always great to see you. This is a powerful day, these two together. Um, you know, what I want to ask you is, I, I really enjoy your perspective on things. You have a lot of really great insights and I've definitely jotted down lots of notes. You'd be very proud. Um, I want to ask you, what is the thing at this point in your life that you're still working on like within yourself? Like what's your greatest challenge for yourself or your spiritual self where you just gotta keep working on that? I can't get past that. Or, or it could be a couple of things, but I think we all know like something that's kind of like our Achilles heel mm -hmm. interpersonally or within ourselves. Like what is your thing that you still work on that we could all learn from as well? That's a good one. Um, that just because I have it a particular way doesn't mean that other people have it that way too. For me, the idea of like, we can get through anything. Everybody doesn't feel that way, Monica. There are people who do have, a, I, I draw the line here. And just because that's not your line doesn't mean that they don't, they're not entitled to theirs. And you gotta respect that. You gotta respect those boundaries. You gotta respect their unwillingness, right? Um, and so that, that for me has been a hard pill to swallow because it has ended relationships. There have been times when I'm just like, oh wow, I can't go further with this person because they're unwilling. And yeah, sure, I can look at myself and say, well, where am I unwilling? Okay, but in the meantime, the friendship's over and I have to grieve that loss because we've decided that this is, this we can't go any further. And that for me has been really, really painful. I don't, I don't know that I'll ever get over that. I feel that, I feel that. And you know what? <laughs> you just said what basically is my Achilles heel. When I say, why do you believe in me more than you believe in you? I've said that to so many people in my life. They're like, Chase, you can do anything. You, you can just open up. So you, I, I'm not like that. What? Mm -hmm. So that's the, we could talk about this forever. But thanks for that answer. That was a good answer. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. We have one minute. Stan, let's make it quick so we can okay. end on time. Yes. Yeah, I, I, just, I, just, I just love it. I just, I just love it when I hear your story. And it's lovely oh, that person that you. That, you just, that you are. Um, do you think that people do have a natural were naturally born before their time to have to take on certain types of personalities and to be the type of person that you are? Or is it all a choice to choose to take that path? Or do we come to have a path in life before we get here? I am, I am of the stand for the and persuasion. <laughs> I think they're both true. I think that there is a, a path, but you also have to choose it. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like how, I don't know if you've ever been in the fields in like the, out in the country, right? There's, there's a thing that has been traveled and it's very easy for the next car or the next bus or the next whatever to, to follow on those tracks because it's been so well traveled. It's, it's been borrowed into the ground, uh, but you don't have to. You can, you can go off road. You can go you know, on, the, on the top of the mound, as it were, instead of the, the built-in kind of roadways. And yeah, it may be harder. It's probably bumpier than, than what's been naturally traveled, but, but you can choose that. So I, I believe in there's a destiny, there's a likely outcome, and you can choose otherwise. Both can be true. Thank you so much, Stan, for that question Thank and you. Monica, your answer, your point of view. Thank I invite you. everybody here and everybody watching us on Facebook Live 
to connect with Dr. Monica, to continue the conversation, building in this relationship and learning from her journey and your journey as well. Monica, thank you so much. Anything you want to share before we conclude? To connect with me, you can go to Instagram. I'm, I'm at Monica Ogando. And actually, we have a, I'm going to do a money mindset makeover challenge nice. uh, in a couple of weeks. And that's because a lot of times people have it like my relationship to the divine or my relationship to my purpose is different and sometimes doesn't align with my money needs or desires. And so we're going to be talking about the money mindset makeover so that you can be in integrity and in alignment with that. And it's free. So you will be communicating. Oh, fantastic. You'll be communicating that via your Instagram. So everybody knows, please connect with her via Instagram. And let's close today with our tenants. Love always. There's no excuse for that one. <laughs> Laugh out loud as much as you can. It's awesome to be laughing all the time. Stress less. Very simple direction. Eat plant-based. I'm not going to say try to eat more. Just <laughs> me, the vegan one. Just eat plant-based, exactly. period. Give, give everything you have. Sleep at least seven hours. If you can more, please do so. Let's move, move your body. And as Dr. Monica will say, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Thank you, everybody. This was an amazing session for the Daily Huddle. And I will see you all tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Peace and blessings. Thank you, everyone. Not, the, not peace and blessings. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Happy International Women's Day. Yay!